Hey guys, how's it going? Thank here and welcome back to the Overwatch League Roundup. Last week we looked at the new boys at Atlanta Rain with a well-known name in Defran. Now it's time to get back to a bit well more well-known teams, shall we? Starting with the Boston Uprising. The Boston Uprising are returning for the next season of the Overwatch League with a bit of a different looking roster. Their colours remain the same, their yellow, black and blue lineup. They are still in, obviously, Boston, because that would be a bit weird. And they're still owned by Robert Kraft. So, what has changed with the Boston Uprising? Well, they get thrown in at the deep end. Because for the first game of the season, they have to play the NYXL. <laughs> so, yeah, not the best of starts for the Boston Uprising. But, going into it, they have a bit of a different lineup. So, Striker who was their standout Tracer player of last season, is no longer with them. He has moved to the San Francisco Shock. Neko, who was a support for the Boston Uprising, is now part of the newbies Toronto Defiant. More on them later in these videos. Quite a few weeks time, but later in these videos. Mistakes has been released from the Boston Uprising. Kalios and Snow, who were flex and support, for the Wasp Uprising are now part of Sky Foxes in Contenders USA, or NA, so I say. Avast and Dream. Ooh, let's not go on to that. Avast and Avast, the support for the Boston Uprising has been released as well. Obviously, we all know about Dream Casper. So, they've obviously had to bring in some replacements for those players that they've lost, and that they did. So, Note Gamsu and Kelex are still there, Aim God is also there now. Blaze is a DPS, uh, American, coming in on the 22nd of October. Also, Color Hex is a DPS for the Boston Uprising now. Axiom is their tank, alongside Fusions. Fusions you might know from the Overwatch World Cup as part of the UK squad. He is a two-way with their academy team, which is no longer, re no longer named Toronto Esports because they couldn't use the name Toronto when they threw their, threw their toys out of the pram. Um, and then we have the Brazilian support, Alamao. Interesting. Do I think this roster is as strong as it was? No, I don't. I have worries for Boston this season. I'm not going to lie. I think... Okay. So, Blaze is well known for doing this in Genji. He was part of Gladiator's Legion in NA Contenders, right? They won the best Contenders team. Let's not beat around the bush. They weren't as good as Optic. They weren't as good as NRG. So, let's not beat around the bush there. He's a decent player, don't get me wrong. Is he the standard of what they had? Perhaps not. Color Hex is from New Zealand. He's well known for his Widowmaker Genji Farah. He was part of Toronto Esports last season, so he's been promoted from their academy team, in other words. Let's not get around this. He was also part of the Sydney Drop Bears in Oceanic Contenders. Uh -huh. I worry for Boston Uprising this season, I'm going to be honest. I think their tank lineup is still very good. I think their support lineup is very good. Their DPS, however, is not, in my opinion, as good as it was last season. I would like to be proved wrong. Don't get me wrong. I want to see these players do well, but I worry that the Boston Uprising have downgraded their DPS. Can you replace Striker? Because I'm looking at the DPS that Boston have got. They've got two. So if one of them gets injured, they're in trouble. They need to sign in another one. And none of them specialize in Tracer. Now, you can look at the meta right now and say Tracer is non-existent and you would be right but if she comes back in mid-season say 
Just at the end of stage one, now I'm going to quote the Houston Outlaws. Remember in stage one of last season where the Houston Outlaws were very, very dominant due to Junkrat. Yes, we all know Jakerat. Now, when Junkrat was nerfed, and in stage two when he got his nerfs, Houston struggled much more than they did in stage one. And imagine a Brigitte nerf and Chaser suddenly becomes a lot more popular with pro pro uh, teams and you don't have a go-to Tracer player. Something like the Houston Outlaws last season. Hmm? Yeah. Houston Outlaws will struggle with the lack of a Tracer player and I worry that's what could happen to Boston. I think you've got to have a steady player that can play Sombra and Tracer. Now the reason for that is Doomfist is vulnerable to stuns. Yes, so is Tracer, but Tracer has more has a faster mobility than Doomfist does. Two, yes, it's good to have a good Widowmaker. Not well known for his McCree color hex. That's worrying. Because I think McCree could be quite interesting. Also, where is the surprise? I get the feeling that this Boston Uprising team is going to be able to only play one way. And that is a cardinal sin in the Overwatch League. Yes, I know that Goat is very dominant at the moment. But that's not due technically to the teams. But if... You are a team that's going to say, right, we'll run the GOATs, we'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you, with a 3-3 comp, fine. But then you can also say, we'll play Dive, and we'll crush her. We can play Ryan Zarya with a Widowmaker and a Hanzo, we'll crush her. We can play Farrah Mercy, we can crush her. Those teams make great teams. The flexibility of a roster. And that's what I worry that this Boston Uprising team doesn't have right now, is flexibility. So, my conclusion on their roster is that they are weaker than last season. I'm sorry to say that. And I think they're going to miss... Look, I think they're going to miss a DPS that can do the Sombra Tracer work, which is something Striker could do. So, Boston... I think are going to struggle to get to the playoffs. Now last season, we thought Boston Uprising would finish bottom of the league. Yeah, we were all kind of wrong about that, weren't we? I should go back and look at my predictions. That would be interesting. But um, I think, honestly, Boston will struggle. I think they tailed off at the end of last season. You saw them struggle in stage 4 when Striker wasn't around. So, I worry for Boston Uprising. But... I'm here to be proved wrong. I'd love to be proved wrong. So, in terms of what I think right now, the two teams we've looked at, Atlanta Reign and the Boston Uprising, I think there's a clear winner out of them, and that's the Atlanta Reign. I think they have much better players than the Boston Uprising do. Yeah, it's going to be one of those. Anyway, this is going to be much shorter than the Atlanta Reign video because this, the Boston Uprising isn't a new team, to be honest here. But... I'm going to leave it here. I think, honestly, the Boston Uprising have got weaker in the offseason, but I would love to be proved wrong. We all want to see a competitive season. That's all I can say. But, for now, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a like, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you in the next video. See you then.